Hi and welcome to the channel. Today I'm going to show you how to create a picture collage such as this in Word which is completely customizable from start to finish. So let's open a new document and of course this is the stage at which you need to decide whether you want a landscape or a portrait image. So at the moment I'm just going to go for a portrait but again you can turn this around if you want a landscape image. So go up to insert Go to Shapes, then click on the square and just click and draw out a rectangle. Now it doesn't matter what size this is or what shape it is because you can completely customise this throughout the whole process. So for, just for the time being, I'm just going to copy and paste this rectangle. I'm going to hold down my Alt or Option key, click and drag. And then I'm going to do that again and again. You can use lots of copy and paste options, it's completely up to you. I'm just going to move these to one side and just make them smaller. And then I'm going to begin to build my collage. So I can use any size and width. And I'm also going to use some of these little rectangles to just put some little details at the side. So all I need to do is to select them, make them really narrow and tall, and then I can just move them by the side of one of the boxes. Again, all personal choice, completely up to you. I'm just gonna copy this box because I need one more over here. I'm just gonna move this one over. Just do it all roughly because there's lots of different customizations that we can do in a minute. Now to keep all of these smaller boxes consistent, we really ought to make them the same width. So you need to decide what which you want. So let's just select this one. Go to shape format and go over here to the height and width. So we want to be concerned about this figure here, the shape width. So I'm just going to make it 0.3. So I'm just going to put 0.3 in and press enter. Do that again with this one at the bottom here, select it all, 0.3, press enter. But this one here will need to be the height, so go to this one here, 0.3 and press enter. Perfect. So now with placement, if you want this one to be in the centre of this box, select them both by holding down your command or control key, which, which will select multiple shapes. Go to shape format, go to align and then select align to center and it will align these two together. Same with this one. Select them both, align, align to middle. And then this one here, we can select this one and this box and this time align, align to right. So that will be lined up with this here, with this edge of this shape here. Now in terms of the distance away from each other, that you will have to eyeball and you can just select each piece and move it with your arrow keys away from each shape. Once you're happy, I'm just going to select the main squares or rectangles. Go up to shape format and go all the way over to format pane and you'll find this menu here. Now this will customize your fill and line colors, your shadows and other formatting and also the layout and properties. So here we'll go to fill and line, just click on the drop down arrows. So we'll sort the line out first. We've got solid line here, already checked. This is the color we've got at the moment, but we're gonna change that to white. And then the width in here, we're going to change to five and press enter. And if I deselect, you can see we've got these lovely white border lines around the outside. Then I'm going to select everything just holding down that command or control key again. Then I'm going to go to picture or text. Now because I've rehearsed this before, it's selected the picture I want. But you can go to insert and then just select the image you want from your files and then just click insert. Now what you will notice is all the pictures are individually in each section and they have been cropped and stretched to fit the shape. That's not what we want. 
Now, first of all, just notice we've got our border lines around the outside of our little narrow boxes. So I'm just going to take that off by selecting them all. Again, holding down that command or control key. Go back up to the bucket and down to line and then just select no line. And now those lines around the outside are gone. So now what I need to do is to select all of the shapes, then go to picture format, then go to group and select group. Now initially nothing changes other than the fact this is now all one group. But if I now go back up to the bucket icon, select picture, you can see what's happened now is that the picture has been inserted across all of the different shapes. Now this is the point at which you can reflect on where you need to make some changes if you need to make some squares wider. So what we can do is go to group and select ungroup. Again, it will change back. It's not a problem. We can just move things down if we want to. Make things bigger. Now a quick way to select everything, just select anything on your page and go to selection pane. Here you can see everything that we've inserted into our document. Click on the top one, hold down the shift key, click on the bottom one, and as you can see, you've now selected everything. Then you can go back to group, select group, then back to format picture, back to the bucket icon, go to picture or texture fill, and you can see now that change has been made. Now you can insert a shadow onto this as well, which really makes things pop. But in order to make the shadow, there's two ways you can do it. You can do it once you've grouped everything together, but what it will mean that there's no shadow on the inside because it's grouped everything together and going to put a shadow on the whole thing rather than the individual images. So if we just go back and ungroup everything, now we can go to this icon here which is in your format picture, go down to shadow, go to presets, and you can make a selection from any of these shadows. Apologies, you can't see them all. I'm going to select this one here, and I'm also going to take all the blur off this shadow. Then I'm going to change the angle. The angle is where, the, if I change it, you can see it spins around the images, and you can place this wherever you like. So I'm going to place it about here, and the reason being is because it gives you just a tiny little shadow at the top of each of these boxes, which gives a good separation from the background and the other boxes as well. Of course, you can change the size or the distance. Here's the distance. And then this is the size. So you can see the different things that you can use this for. And again, completely customizable to suit the look you're going for. Then you can go back up to group and select group. Check you're happy with the look. If not, just ungroup everything again and make some changes. Once you're happy with everything, again, just go up to selection pane and just select everything. Then go to picture format, go to group and select group. Then go to format picture, go to the bucket, picture or texture, and there's your picture. Once you're happy with this, we can put in a background, go to insert, shapes, click on the square, click and draw out a rectangle that covers the entire page. Go over here to format shape, click on the bucket and go to gradient fill. I've already rehearsed this. So what we have is a gradient slider here with some colors. So here you can see I've got a slight gray. If I just change the color, you can see that that color changes. And here we've got white. And if I change that color, we will be able to see where it's affecting. So we have got this on radial and the direction, sorry, you can't see it, but it's the middle one with a circle in the center here. What I have done with this color choice, I'll show you in a second. Let's just put this to the back. So this background now 
go to send backwards, send to back. If you can't see this menu, it's because you haven't got anything selected and you need to expose the shape format tab. So for this one here, this color, go to color, go down to more colors at the bottom. And then here, if you're lucky enough, you can have this eyedropper tool, just click, hover over the dark gray and click OK. Alternatively, you can use this little slider in the middle here. You can move this around any way you like. Just pick a color, try to pick a color from your image to make the background cohesive. Anywhere in the image, there's greens, there's reds, grays, all sorts of colors. So I'm just going to pick a dark gray here, click OK. And as you can see now, I've got a nice cohesive background to this image. If you want to export this image with the background, you just select everything. But first of all, what you need to do is just go to the selection pane here and then you need to, you've got a group six here. You can use this little eyeball tool here. You've got to make sure that this is completely lined up with this rectangle here, which is your background. So select this one, hold down the command and control key and select this one. Go to align, align to center, align to middle, then group them all together. So then select it, right click, go down to save as picture. Then you can place it any way you like. Picture one, you can save it as a PNG file or a JPEG or any of the following. Then just click save. And then if we open a new document, then if I quickly open a new document, we can go to insert, pictures, picture from file, go to picture one and click insert. And now that is a JPEG and you can resize it as normal. You go to wrap text in front of text. You can now move this any way you like. So now this picture can be resized, used on social media, websites, documents and flyers. So I hope this has helped you today. If it has, please like and subscribe and have a great day.